outlining a, a, a clear message tonight, I just want to bring out a couple of things that uh, we need to remember. First, can everybody hear me okay? Okay, I'm not too loud. It was good. Very good. There's, uh, you know, you don't have to know the whole Bible to live in victory. Now, I've studied it from Genesis Revelation for 55 years, and, and, I, and I've read scriptures for 54 years, and sometimes they just come alive to me. 54 years reading that same scripture over and over. and See, that's where the spirit of wisdom and revelation comes in. That comes from God, the Holy Spirit. And you must remember to pray that prayer. And that's one thing you need to nail down. And you will find that, and let's put it up on the board, certain things you need to know and pray and how to pray and what to pray for. But that's in Ephesians <coughs> excuse me, uh, 1, 7, 17. Let's put that on the board, 17. We're just going to sort of look at some scriptures because of our time element tonight and some things that we've already learned and sort of get more established in those things. Now, remember, when you read the Word of God, who is speaking? Paul is speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, okay? So he, he's speaking. He says, now, for I, remember I said, identify I or him or whom or he or whatever. Who is I? Paul. Paul. That's right. For I always, now that, that's a statement there, isn't it? Always. So we need some always in our lives. Always pray for the wisdom and the, and the revelation of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Notice, pray to the God, our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. So when we pray, we know we pray to God. And we pray to God in the name of Jesus. And we always come to the throne through the blood of Christ and through the name of Jesus. It's the blood that has cleared the way for us. That he, now who is he? God may grant you. Who is you? Everybody point to you. Okay, very good. See, when you start reading the script, you break them down and you learn. Boy, you learn so much by just doing that. All right, so that he may grant you, that is us Christians, a spirit. Now notice, it's not a capital S, so it's not the Holy Spirit. So it's a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Do you know what revelation is? If you don't know what revelation is, raise your hand. If you do know what revelation is, raise your hand. Okay. Well, let me make it a little bit more clear. It's that which the Lord reveals to us. It's a revealing of that word. So you can read the word and it can just be a dead word to you. It's all intellectual. Okay. Remember, we're spirit being. God is a spirit, and in the word of God there is spirit. My word is spirit and truth. So you can know it up here, but you don't have that spirit. Uh, have you ever heard, uh, how was the spirit of the party? How many remember that? that that's an expression. How, how was the spirit, or how was that man's spirit? How was the spirit in the service? That, of course, that would mean the Holy Spirit. But... So, what do we want God to grant us? You know, usually we pray, Lord, help me. Well, that's good. I prayed that prayer many a time. <laughs> but that must be very important for Paul, for the Holy Spirit to have. That verse of Scripture recorded in the Holy Bible. There's a definite reason, if, you, if we're going to grow, if we're going to mature, if we're going to understand the Word of God, we have got to have something granted unto us. Now, what is that? Hmm? Wisdom and revelation. Do you see that, how important that is? 
Because uh, if people don't, they'll just go on and they will not really understand or comprehend. Now, I'm not so much, I'm not talking about how many people in here saved. Let's see your hands. Raise your hands. You say, you know you're saved. I ain't talking about heaven and hell or salvation. We're talking about now growing and maturing and, and learning to commune with God, to get understanding, to get revelation of God's word, how to live and how to be victorious over every situation that may come against us. There are certain things that we need to know. So I'm going to share with you now, I'm 80 years old, and I've had the spirit of wisdom and revelation uh, imparted into me for many, many years. So when I share a word with you, I have received the wisdom and revelation of that word. Do we understand that? Now, I have preached, and sometimes I do preach words that I do not have the spirit of wisdom and revelation on, but I preach it anyway, and maybe somebody will catch it. <laughs> but, but a lot of the scriptures, the Bible, things are alive to me. It is so alive. It is, it's revelation. Uh, I, I see with my spiritual eyes what the Lord is saying. And it brings life into my spirit man. Can we comprehend that? Okay, good. All right. So we're going to pray. Now this is a prayer that we need to pray. And it's found in Ephesians 1.17. Grant you a spirit of wisdom, revelation, of insight into the mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of Him, Christ Jesus. So we have a deep, with this revelation, we can get deep knowledge and deep understanding, deep comprehension of what He has done for us. It, sets you, it just sets you alive. You're solid. You're solid. Okay, now I encourage you, this week, keep your Bible open to that and read it every day. Uh, have it somewhere in your house that, that uh, I have my Bible open at the house, and, I, and when God makes something alive to me, I keep reading it. I keep reading it. I keep looking at every word, many words we look up in the dictionary. Instead of worrying about what the whole Bible says, Certain things that we need to know to live victorious is what we're after now. Okay? Now, yeah, read, study, but hear what I'm saying is concentrate on certain verses of Scripture, which I'm bringing up to you. Now, that's a powerful verse of Scripture. Now, let's go to verse 18. Now, we want God. Now, notice this. Here's what I want you to see. See that? That's a key. Faith is a key. Every promise, everything in the Bible from beginning to end, which we have on the board. See, I just don't write this stuff on the board for nothing. Faith from beginning to the end of our lives. The just shall walk by what? Faith. The just shall live by faith. That's in the Old Testament. So faith is very important. Faith is the key. Now tonight, when I go out there, I'm not going to scratch my head and say, now how does this car work? I got faith. Put it in, crank it up, go home, eat some pizza. Well, that's pretty hard to digest. <laughs> All right, I said I wasn't going to get, I was getting rid of my humor. All right, look at 18. By having, notice, by having the eyes of your heart or your inner man, your inner man now, when you see heart, it's the inner man. How many of you ever seen the heart of a pine tree? How many of you know you can uh, ever look at a pine tree when it falls and the heart will get fat? And we used to cut that for kindling, and it, 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 it's just like that. You can light it, boy, it'll flame up and get that fire going real fast. So the inner part, the inner man that's been born again can be flooded. Notice this, flooded with light. Think of your inner man being flooded with this light. What, what would you do? Get all excited going to oh, behave yourself. But that's true. You, it, it's, it, woo! Okay? 
Now, it's a slow process, but if you start meditating on the Word of God and start praying, God, grant me the wisdom and the revelation to understand this Word, or I want to have a greater knowledge and insight about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's knowledge of Him. Okay? So that you can know and understand the hope to which He has called you. He has all called us to a hope. What is this hope? Christ in our heart is our only hope of glory. Let me rephrase that. That's true. That's what I just said. Christ in our heart, which is a mystery, is our only hope of heaven or glory. So, there are, there are things in the Bible that you will only know by the Holy Spirit showing you. Nobody comes to the Father except through Christ. And that's done by the Holy Spirit. The reason you're saved tonight is that the Holy Spirit illuminated your heart, gave you understanding that you were lost and bound to hell. And that one man, that first man, Adam, did it, made you a sinner. But the other man, remember we read tonight? Canceled all that out by the cross. And now we're born again. New creatures. You have to see yourself as a new creature. Forget about your outward appearance. That's going to fade away. You're going to have a glorified body one day. But you've got to see yourself as a spirit. And your spirit, man, is a brand new spirit. It's a brand new heart. God promised the Israelites years ago in Ezekiel, 36, 36, I think, somewhere along that, I will give them a new heart or a new spirit. I will put my laws in their heart. Well, that's what he's done to us. But with that revelation, now, I have to bring it down to where we live. I hope that y'all can identify that. I'm sure you can. When I met Susan, what happened? What happened to me that I would want to marry this woman? How many think that I got a revelation? My heart was flooded. And I, it's hard to explain, but I wanted to spend my whole life with her. Now, how do I know that? I mean, you do the same thing. When you, you remember when you met each other? You remember that? You remember that, Elizabeth? <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Willie? Yes, sir. Uh, that's true. Man, I was on fire. <laughs> it, set, you know, it set you on fire. Exciting. Pick you up at eight, babe. All right, let's be. I'm trying to get you to understand. If I if I if I look like a fool, I don't care. I know where I'm going. I got a I've got an inheritance waiting on me uh, in heaven, and I'm on my way. So so I'm free. But you know, I love everybody. But I want to I want to be a teacher that you can understand understand the hope to which He has called you. God has called us to a great hope, and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints has set us his set apart ones our right, number one here's a revelation we've all been set apart you got to see that listen we're not of this world someone said well bob why don't you do that well you see i've been set apart for god and there's certain things I do not do. Now, I don't put that on other people, but I'm using myself as an example. You're the same way. How many goes to the beer joint and gets drunk now? Nobody? You don't do that no more, Willie? No, because you've been set apart to God, and you know that, and you put off all that stuff. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? We've been set apart to God. God has an inheritance for us in heaven, and we are His inheritance. Mm. 
What about your grandkids? Mrs. Keys, your grandkids, are they an inheritance to you? They are a blessing. Mine are. When I see them, it's like those kids back there, when I, your kids, I love your kids. I mean, they, see, God put all that in me. I love you. That's God. Because God has given me the spirit of wisdom and revelation to see people that you are God's inheritance and you're precious to God. And if I do, when I, when I do good things for you, I do it for Jesus. See, certain things we have to learn. Now, how many of you know when that revelation hits you, you treat people different? So I'll look at Susan sometimes. I just, God, thank you so much for my precious wife. She's so beautiful at 79, almost 80 years old. It's still Mama Mamiya to me. I say, honey, come on, let's sit on the couch a while. Those are mm, choice of moments. But see, God did all that. I'd love to talk to my children sometimes, but my girls, how many know what I'm talking about? I, you know, I said, well, if you shut up, I'd like to say. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. All right, look at there. So, all right, now, the eyes, the eyes of your heart be flooded. Lord, open my eyes. Eyes, we have other eyes. We're not talking about these eyes. We're talking about spiritual eyes. You remember what the prophet said? Lord, open my servants or your servants' eyes that, they, that he might see there's more with us than them. Have you ever seen that? I'm, t- I'm saying when, your eye, when our eyes are open, I know your eyes are open in many situations, but our eyes need to be open a whole lot more because I tell you, it will bring transforming power in our life. Powerful. Mm. All right. Now, so that is something you need to nail down real good. Now, I want to I want to bring this scripture up again. Uh, Romans five nineteen. Let's look at that again because this is powerful. And I'm just going over these scriptures to just jar our memory. Now, for just as by one man, remember what we were talking about when you read the Bible, identify the man, the disobedience, who it was, it was Adam, right? We go all the way down, and everybody was constituted as a sinner. So how did you become a sinner? It's important that you know that. Well, I, did, I told a lie. Well, that's what sinners do. We became a sinner because it was passed from Adam in his DNA, all the way down to us. The ripple effect, all the way down to us. And we were born sinners. Hadn't done anything yet, but we were born sinners by the one man's disobedience. Is that what that says? Okay, and you need to understand that. So, God loves us. So he's got to do something. My goodness, Adam, my first... Adam messed the whole nine yards up. Now, it didn't catch God off guard. He knew it was going to happen, but he had a plan. All right, so the first Adam, how many of you know the first Adam messed us up, but the last Adam, which is found in um, 1 Corinthians, I think it's 15, somewhere right in there, has straightened everything up. Powerful. So don't look at yourself anymore as a sinner. I know sometimes we have songs up there, and I say, I always say, was. You ain't no more. Can you grasp that? I didn't say you couldn't sin. Now that that's the will. You can sin anytime you choose to. But you are not a sinner. You are now a saint. 
you are now a, a set apart one. You belong to God. I belong to God. Now that's great. Because he's going to take care of his own. I tell you that right now. So look at the scriptures again now. So, we know how we all became sinners by the one man, disobedience. So by one man's obedience, and we identify that one man, Jesus Christ, the many, all people of the world will be constituted righteous, made acceptable to God, brought into right standing with Him. So as far as God's concerned, let's know this now, it is done. But as a sinner, we have to see that we had sinned, repent of it, and accept the work of God, accept what Jesus did for us, accept his making us righteous. Notice that. By the one, we have been made acceptable to God, brought into right standing with him. By what Jesus Christ did on the cross. No man can earn it, no man can work for it. It is done for us by Jesus Christ. And you accept it how? How? Faith. Faith. Everybody say faith. faith. Everything is by faith. Uh, turn to uh, Romans um, chapter 1, verse 17. Very important scripture. Everybody there, we got a little board. All right, first he starts out, for in the gospel, the, this is the gospel. The word gospel means good news. Everybody remember that. The word gospel means good news, okay? A righteousness which God ascribes is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith as it is written, the man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith. Boy, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Put the King James up there. We'll get a little smaller there. All right. King James, Romans 1, 17. For, the, for therein is the righteousness of God, that is, it's in the gospel. In other words, it's revealed right in here. See this? His righteousness is revealed right in, right in the Word of God. It's revealed. That's why we have to read it. From faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, remember I said faith is a key. The Bible says, If I will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thy shall be saved. All right? We read that. Now the next thing we have to do, we have to accept that. We have to receive that. And how do we receive it? By faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the, things not, the, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is the key. So we, we read the Bible and it says, If I will confess with thy mouth, Lord, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord. And Lord, I believe in my heart that God, you raised him from the dead. And the Bible says, you're saved by it. Lord, I accept it by faith. Got it? That's it. I accept it by faith. The Bible says, I'm a new creature. I don't argue with God. What are we arguing with God for? If he says you're a new creature, Lord, by faith, I accept that. The Bible says we are accepted in the beloved. Break it down. We are accepted in Jesus. And how did you get in Jesus? He put you in Jesus, and you are fully accepted. Yeah, but I got these problems, and I've got this, and I've done. Forget about all of that. It's about God. It's what God has done. Everybody say, it's what God has done. And you accept what he has done. By faith. It's not complicated. All right, let's, let's take some of the other promises of God. 
Um, it's written. Now, this is a hard one, and we all struggle with this one. It is written, For by the stripes of Jesus we were healed, and if we were healed, we are healed. Now, we struggle with that. No, same thing. How did you become a Christian? By faith. How did you find out that you were accepted and to be loved, and you're really experiencing that now? You're accepted and to be loved by faith. Everything is by faith. So by faith, don't have to strain at it. Oh, I have. <laughs> I don't strain at it. Thank you, Father. Thank you. A year ago, most of you know I had to re get some uh, hearty burgers out of my neck. And, uh, but I was still, we're all, we're all, grown-ups in here. I was still bleeding down here because of my prostates, okay? And uh, it cleared up, and then about three weeks, I started bleeding again. So over about a year, I was bleeding, but I was, I, y'all didn't know it. I was going on preaching, teaching. I said, Lord, it is written. By the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. Now, I've waited a whole year now, about a whole year, to testify what I'm doing tonight. I'm testifying. It's God's mercy. It's God's grace. But I accepted it by faith. At some point, when that spirit of revelation hits you, it's done. Are you listening? All of a sudden, the eyes of your understanding has been opened. And you see it is true. And you know it. And you accept it. And you praise God for it. And for the last year, I have not bled one bit. And every time I go, to, seriously, now, now y'all girls hide your face. I'll talk to the men over here. Every, every time I go to the bathroom, it's, it's, it's praising God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. How many know what I'm talking about? I mean, it's just thank you. I mean, every time I go to the bathroom, and in the night I might get up two or three times uh, during the day. And it's, I, I mean, it's constantly thanking him, thanking him for healing me. And I can still serve God's people, still preach. But see, but it took a whole year off and on bleeding and all. And I may have to have another ream job, and I don't care for those ream jobs. She's being a nurse. She knows what that is. Thank you, Lord. And it was done for me really before the foundation of the world. But in the time of God, it was manifested when Christ was, was nailed to that cross and he took those stripes. He didn't take those stripes for himself. He took them for you and he took them for me. But I'm saying faith, the key of faith is so important. Boy, time's going by fast. So remember, everything is by faith from beginning to every promise in the Bible, in the book is mine, but it's by faith. All right, now. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God. It's right in this book here. It's the power of God, notice this, unto salvation. Now remember, salvation is more than just being having your spirit saved. When you see that word salvation means it's the power of God unto salvation. All right, let's name what salvation is. The saving of your spirit, the crucifixion of your old man, you died with Christ. When he arose, we rose with him. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Now notice, the gospel is the power of God. It has power in it. And when you believe it and put your faith in it, it releases that power into our lives, and the Holy Spirit has the responsibility to make it come true in our lives. Okay? So remember, that's why you want to read and keep reading this book. Notice, to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So you, we have to believe it and realize when you hold that book in your hand, it's the power of God unto whatever I need. Whatever God has provided for me at Calvary, it's mine in Jesus' name and by faith. Now, let me get you excited. We are no more slaves. 
We are sons of God. And if sons, heirs, and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. See, we've got to get, we've got to get, <laughs> we've got to get further, we've got to get further from this side of the cross. We've got to get, we got to get down the line to see where God is bringing us, uh, you know, to rule and reign in this life through Christ Jesus, to reign and rule with Him throughout eternity, to live with Him throughout eternity. I mean, we've got to see that this thing is going on, but we're camped out at the cross. I see the church as a whole, and I don't say that to be ugly. But I want to move this body now to, to the point of, 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 of maturity that we find that, that as we get the spirit of wisdom and revelation operating in our lives, the Holy Spirit then will be able to show us many things that will cause us to grow and mature, not just trying to understand it in our intellectual mind. I've met many people that could quote the whole Bible, but they did not have that spirit. They did not have that power in their life. They did not have that kindness, that gentleness of the spirits. Did not have the fruits of the spirit. Oh, they knew the Bible. Preachers. Preachers have preached this word for many years and then got saved. That's a good one. So unless we are doers of the word and accept and know how to pray, what do we need? None of us need any more food until in the morning at breakfast. I can't wait. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> what do we need? We need faith. Well, God's given us a measure of faith, but we need more faith. And how do we get faith? Faith comes by what? Hearing the Word of God. And what else? I forgot. Help me out. <laughs> hearing and hearing and hearing the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So, all of the, the promises of God are in here. Remember, faith is a key. If God says it, believe it. And I think believe it and, and faith is really close together. Say what you believe. What do you believe? I believe God loves me. I believe I am a son of God. I believe that I'm an heir of God. I believe that when I leave this planet, I'll be in heaven. I believe I will live forever. I believe that all my sins are gone. I believe that my old man, the old Bob Tilton, that when that sin principle came down, died, and I'm a new creature... In Christ Jesus, I've been made a new creature. And we'll stop there tonight. Turn to uh, 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 2 Corinthians 5, 5, 17. Now, these are the things, when you start believing it and, and meditating on these things, I'm telling you, you know yourself, you can come alive real fast. 5, 17, everybody there. It's on the board. And we'll move fairly fast, all right, okay? Four minutes. Are we there? Are right, that's King James. Hit, go back to the Amplified, if you don't mind. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature. Mrs. Keys, you know how to graft plants into plants, don't you? Yeah. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I know there's different ways of doing it. You take some of this soil, put on a, on a, uh, on a limb, you cut that limb, you cut it a little bit there, and you put another plant in, another small uh, insert plant in that. All right, here's, here's, the, way, here's the way it is right here. <coughs> you can take, uh, you can take a, a tree... It's the root system there, the ground right here. Okay. Uh, you can take, uh, let's say that this here plant, it's got a real small flower. And it's not very beautiful. So you can cut it down. Like I say, it's different ways of doing it. This is one way you can do it. And you can take a, a little branch 
off another beautiful, let's say, a, a, a camellia, a beautiful camellia. I mean, big flowers, beautiful. You take a little cutting, they call them cuttings, and you can cut right here in here into that bark, and you can put that little cutting in there like this, and this will grow and draw from the uh, root system and grow into a beautiful big tree with big blossoms on it. So we've been grafted. The little cutting gets its nourishment from the old root. You got that? We're grafted into Christ, and we draw from Him His life. By faith, you get it going. All right. New, all together, all together, the old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, fresh and new has come. Now that fresh and new has to grow. Uh, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. For the law of the spirit of life. Everybody say, the law of the spirit of life. I right, say, spirit of life. Just say, spirit of life. There's a law. It's the spirit of life. Spirit of life. That spirit of life is Christ's life. Which is in Christ Jesus. All right? What is in Christ Jesus? That spirit of life. When he was crucified, he was buried, he rose, he was resurrected, a new life came into being. And we're to live by that life. If you don't understand it, don't worry about it. Pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The law of, of our new being has freed me from the law of sin and of death. You need to meditate on that and ask God to give you the wisdom. Now, here's, where it is. here's what it is. At some point, there's a transition. Everybody know what a transition? Point one to point two. A transition. We start out as Christians. Yes, we're saved. But we're still living by the old life from the old man. Do we understand that? Still living. There's another life that God wants us to live by. So he engrafts us into Christ. And we are to draw, now this is all spiritual, by faith we believe it, we accept it, and we acknowledge it that I get my life from God now, from Jesus Christ. And by faith I receive that, that, that life because it's that life of Christ that will set us free from that other law of sin and death, sin and death of the old nature that still is operating to some degree in us. I hope I hadn't lost anybody. It's spiritual. And you make a transition, literally the Holy Spirit will, will do it all, but you've got to believe it, accept it, how? By faith. Every day, Lord, I live by the life of another. Remember uh, Galatians 2.20, real quick. Uh, I'm opening the king of worms here. I don't have time to, to undo it. <coughs> Paul makes a statement. I have been crucified with Christ. Everybody says, I have been crucified with Christ. Don't try to crucify yourself. Accept it by faith. Say, I've already been crucified. Boy, isn't that a blessing? By faith. With Christ, with Christ, I have been crucified with Christ. In him that is in Christ, I have shared his crucifixion. So we have shared his crucifixion. When he was crucified, who was crucified with him? We were the old man, we accepted by faith. Okay, now you drove a nail in him real quick. It is no longer I who live, but Christ. He's saying, I'm now living by the life of Christ. It's in me. When I was born again, it was put into me. I'm in Christ. And now the transition is taking place. And now I'm living by the life of another. Let's look at the other real quick. It is no longer I who live, but Christ of Messiah lives in me. The life I now live in the body, in these bodies right here, I live by faith 
in and by a heave to and rely on and complete trust in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So this is spiritual when you can connect up to the Holy Spirit who is, is the, another, uh, the Spirit of Christ and the Holy Spirit is the same Spirit. By faith you connect to his life and you live each day by his life. I know your minds are trying. That's why you need the spirit of wisdom and revelation. God, give us the spirit of revelation on that. Oh, Lord, it's a whole new life. This is why people drop out. I can't do it. You know why they can't do it? They're trying to do it in their own power. They live their life in Romans 7, 14, 15, 16. The things I want to do, I can't do. The things I don't want to do, I do. How many know that? You get God, you get a hold of God and say, God, I, I want to see that, that revelation. And by faith, I receive it and I claim it. Now, I'm going to give this an example and then I'm going to quit. I had an old bulldozer. What was my uncle's bulldozer and I operated. And it, it run on, on diesel, but it run on gas. You had to start it with gas. So you go, yin, 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 boom, 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 boom. Did you start, you start your truck with, with a gas or just diesel? Diesel, diesel okay. No. Yeah, my tractor is the same way because you have to heat it. You have this heat thing, don't you, that heats it. Okay, but back then, we started on, on regular gas, and it would run on regular gas, but it didn't have much power. So you let it heat up on regular gas, then you throw this lever, push it up like that, boom, 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 that old diesel fuel would start getting hot and burning that and that bulldozer had bull had power to push over trees it is now living on the diesel fuel that gives it more power and by faith boom we push that baby and lord today i'm going to live by the life of another it is no more I that liveth, but I live by the life of another. Now, the Holy Spirit has the responsibility to make it come real to you. You don't have to try to make it, but I guarantee you, as you start gaining that knowledge and doing that, He has the responsibility to release His power, the, the resurrected life of Christ operating, you can say with Paul, it is no more I that liveth, yet I live. But really, it's not me. It's the life of Christ living in this old bulldozer that gives us all the power. How many understand it just a little bit? Pray that God will give you the revelation. God bless you. I hope you learned something. Glory.